Hello and welcome to EC Electronics. Today's class we are going to discuss the topic resistors. Resistors are very basic electronic components. So today we will be discussing what are resistors, what is the rule or what is the principle of application of how a resistor works that is the Ohm's law. Now after discussing that we will discuss about the series and parallel connection of a resistor then we will see what are the different types of resistors. So these are the topics which are included in this video. So let's see what is a resistor. A resistor is a passive electronic component which is used for opposing the flow of current. That is when a current flows through a conductor in order to give a resistance or our opposition we use a resistor. A resistor is denoted using the symbol like this. So in an electronic circuit diagram if you want to identify a resistor this is how we identify a resistor. It is also uh, taking a different form of representation that is using a rectangle and inside this rectangle there will be value of the resistor written. So these are the two forms of representation of a resistor. So I told resistor is a passive electronic component. Now what are passive electronic components and what are active electronic components? Components which are capable of generating electrical energy or electrical power by their own are called active components. For example, a transistor is an active component. Whereas a resistor is a passive component because it is by its own is not capable of generating electrical energy or power. So resistors are passive electronic devices or electronic components. This is the famous Ohm's law. Ohm's law actually explains what is a resistor or how it works. So it is the law of a resistance. So we know that the unit of a resistance is Ohm. It is this. Ohm is the unit of resistance. We say 10 ohm, 10 kilo ohm. So these are the ways which we represent resistance values. So what is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states that at constant temperature, it is very important, at constant temperature or at constant room temperature, the current through two points of a conductor is directly proportional to the voltage across the conductor or across the two points. So we can say the current I across two points of a conductor. Let's see these are the two points is directly proportional to the voltage or voltage drop across the two points. I said at constant temperature or at room temperature. We say at constant temperature because we know the temperature has a lot of effect in semiconductors or conductors. As temperature increases, new carriers are generated, electrons will break bonds and new carriers will be generated and thus it will again affect the current values. So we have to say this at constant temperature, the current across the two points of a conductor is directly proportional to the voltage across the conductor. So we change this proportionality by using 1 by R into V. So we know that the resistance is something which is opposing the current. So we are using 1 by R and into V. So we can say I equal to V by R. So this is Ohm's law. Now, we will see what is Ohm's triangle. There is a triangle which is used for representing Ohm's law which is the Ohm's triangle and it can be represented like this. Here we are putting V, here it is R, here it is I. So, this triangle is actually used for uh, studying the Ohm's law easily. So, there are three terms V, I and R. What is V? V equal to 
i into r v equal to i into r now r equal to take the division of these two r equal to v by i r equal to v by i and i is equal to v by r i equal to v by So, if you have trouble in studying the Ohm's law equations or voltage and current equations by heart, you don't need to by heart it, just study the Ohm's law. Next, we will see what are the voltage and current changes and current voltage equations when resistors are connected in series and parallel. A series of resistors. Here, I am going to take three resistors. These are my three resistance R1, R2 and R3. Okay, so these are the three resistors R1, R2 and R3 and while considering the current, the current value will be same across all the three resistors that is across R1 and R2 and R3, the current values will be same which I am going to take as I. And while considering the voltage, the voltage drop across the three resistances R1, R2 and R3 will vary and it will be given like V1, V2 and V3. So V1 is a voltage drop across R1, V2 is a voltage drop across R2 and V3 is a voltage drop across R3. So the resultant or the final voltage across the three terminals V1 can be written as sorry v can be written as v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 so this is the total voltage across these two points so v1 plus v2 plus v3 is a total voltage and i can write v as according to ohm's law v equal to i into r and i can write i into r1 plus i into r2 plus i into r3 so by taking i is common i into r1 plus r2 plus r3. So this is the voltage equation while connecting the resistors in series. What happens when the resistors are connected in parallel? So I am again using three resistors and I am connecting in parallel r1, r2 and r3. So here the current i will split as i1, i2 and i3. And the total current in series connection I equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. And while considering the voltage, the voltage drop will be same across the three resistors. So the voltage is same and it is V. So simply we can write V. So we can write I1, I2 and I3 in the form of V by R using Ohm's law as that is V by R1 plus V by R2 plus V by R3. That is V into 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. That is the current equation. So these are the equations while connecting the resistors in series and in parallel. Next we will see the different resistor types. There are mainly three types of resistors, carbon resistors, film resistors and wire bound resistors. First we are going to discuss about the carbon resistor. Carbon resistor is formed by using finely grounded carbon or graphite and the deposition of this carbon dust or graphite dust will vary the value of resistor resistance. So here the inner portion is finely ground carbon, carbon dust or graphite and covering it there is a insulating material which can be a ceramic coating. So this ceramic coating will, will bind this carbon dust or graphite. Then these carbon materials are connected to two connecting leads. So this leads will give the electrical contact. So inside this carbon resistor there is a carbon material 
and covering it there is an insulating material which is a ceramic coating and connecting the the carbon dust or carbon material there are two leads which are taken outside and which is used for providing electrical contact so this is a very simple form of resistance uh, resistor and these resistors are generally used in laboratories or labs so that is the carbon resistor so a film resistor is formed by depositing of films that is carbon films metal films or metal oxide films onto a substrate and it is again wound or bound with a insulator coating such as ceramic so here metal films are deposited to a substrate then there is a outer coating which is an insulating material so here the films can be either metal carbon or metal oxide generally nickel or tin oxide is used as metal films or metal oxide films and there are grooves formed in this films by using laser cuttings so here there are grooves these grooves are formed by laser cutting and by changing the thickness of these grooves you can change the value of resistance in carbon type of resistors the value of resistance can be changed by varying the carbon composition or graphite composition but here we can change the resistance value by changing the thickness of these grooves and there is an outer insulator again there are two connecting leads this is the metal film can be either metal metal oxide or carbon so this type of resistance is the resistor is the film resistor the next type of resistors we are going to discuss is wire wound resistors these resistors are formed by winding of metal alloy wires such as nichrome wires onto an insulating former or a substrate these resistors are maximum up to values 100 kilo ohms and they are able are capable of handling high electrical powers and hence there is a tendency or possibility of of generating high electrical power in order to prevent heating of the material these resistors are pressed to aluminium heat sink body with cooling fins attached so this is the wire winding and it is pressed to a aluminium heat sink aluminium heat sink to absorb excess amount of heat if generated and it is also attached to cooling fins so these fins and aluminium heat sink will increase the overall surface area and hence more heat absorption is provided and it will prevent the heating of the resistor so this is the wire winding and this is the outer coating so this is the wire wind or wire wound resistor so these are the three type of resistors which are used so today's class we have discussed about what is a resistor what is its unit how is it denoted in electronic circuits what is ohms law how we are uh, using the resistors in series connection and parallel connection and also what are the different resistor types so resistors are very basic electronic devices and they are passive electronic devices so i hope the video is useful i hope you gain some knowledge from this video so if yes please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to share this video with your friends and also do subscribe to the channel thank you